today, 24th of April, 2013, I made a short film to commemorate Cawthorn Camp. It was a camp which was built during the war for various reasons and was used by different regiments as it came from different theatres of the war. And eventually it ended up uh, as a home for the Polish soldiers and the Polish families which were fleeing the Russians uh, in Europe. It's very fresh in my memory because as a child, 74 years ago, I can remember all this and going to events in the camp to the pictures and seeing the local girls <coughs> <laughs> right, good afternoon and welcome to this special occasion. Sylvia Le Breton, our local playwright, first sowed the seeds which brings us all here today. Sylvia wrote and staged a play called Distant Country about a Polish soldier who left his native land and eventually ended his journey in Cawthorn. That soldier remained in South Yorkshire married a local girl and started a family. His son-in-law, David Chinnock, who lives in the village, along with Jan Kukula, another Cawthorner, whose family remained in the parish, put together an exhibition of photographs and memories of local people about life in the camp. The exhibition was held in our local museum and attracted nearly 1,000 visitors before going on show in Barnsley and Huddersfield. I would now like to hand over to our local historian, Barry Jackson, president of the museum, who will give a brief history of the camp. And after the unveiling, our assistant vicar, the Reverend Jean Dakin, will bless the plaque. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. You've got to exercise your imagination a bit now because it was a very different place to which the uh, soldiers came. You've got to go back to 1940. <laughs> and here were two very large gates. The and it was in July 1940 that things began to take shape. It was in the aftermath of the Dunkirk evacuation and the government, the government were looking for places to put the soldiers who had been evacuated. Obviously, they didn't want to gather them all in one place, and so they were diversified around the country. Consequently, on the 22nd of July, 1940, in the park, tents began to appear. And two days later, the King's Royal Rifles and the Rifle Brigade came in at their fast marching pace into the camp, the newly erected camp, they had to stuff their mattresses and their pillows with straw. It couldn't have been a very 
pleasant uh, time, but eventually it was realised that it was going to work, that it was going to be a permanent place, and the government set up a contract with the construction firm of Joyce of Blackpool to come along and erect a permanent camp. And a man from the northeast, Eddie Foster, were two who came to the camp, met local girls and married and stayed in the village. The camp was not the first time that Cannon Hall had been used for soldiers. In the first war, the soldiers used to come from uh, Silkston camp and uh, do exercises on the water in the uh, park. And also, I found out that they knew very well about the camp as a place for the military because just before the war began, the OTC, the Officer Training Corps, came and stayed under canvas in the park. And the Royal Ulsters, Scots and Canadians all came to the camp. The Canadians came, I think, in 1943. <laughs> Thank you so much to Barry. Uh, his wealth of information, his encouragement and his knowledge about the place where we live is phenomenal. And we owe him a great debt of gratitude for the things that he keeps on reminding in this community standing in the shadow of Hugh Meanley and I want to uh, re-echo his encouragement of interaction of people. It's wonderful that we've got our young people here today because they've got such a lot to remember about what's gone on in the place where they come to school and the place where they live. That remembering is so important and as communities and as a country, we've been doing it a lot. And thanks be to God for that, because we owe so much to many other people for our freedom. So let us pray. I think there's one of these for you. What is it in? Yeah. And, and the lady that's been doing all the announcing, there's one for you as well. <laughs> Thank you. We thought we could we couldn't let Margaret go because she's done such an excellent job and one we'd like you to receive a bouquet of flowers as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The man himself, Mr History of Cawthorn, Barry Jackson, we'd like you to the village hall, just up the road there, I'm not sure most people know where it is, there's an exhibition and there's sandwiches and coffee and tea. You're all very, very welcome. And thank you for so much for coming along. Bye then.